Good evening, SFBN fans. I am your host, Nikki Jones, and you are watching In the Paint, a high school basketball talk show dedicated to girls basketball in the state of Pennsylvania. It's finally March Madness, so on this episode, we're going to talk about some championship games within the public and Catholic League and also give you some more updates on some brackets. So stay tuned for more. Welcome back. I'm your host, Nikki Jones, sitting alongside with Joe Fight and Mike McDonald. So let's get right into it. First, we're going to go into the championship game for the Public League. Some intense games going on this past weekend. Absolutely. The, uh, the palestra was rocking uh, between the, uh, the Public League and the Catholic League championships uh, Sunday and Monday. Um, for the uh, fourth time in a row, the uh, Public League final was uh, Imhotep Charter and Mastery Charter North, and um, Imhotep had won the first two of those. Uh, Mastery North built a 12-point lead in, in uh, last year's game and held on to win by two points. Uh, this year, Mastery built another big 12-point lead, and uh, that was in the second half, and uh, all of a sudden disappeared. Uh, you know, they turned the ball over, and uh, uh, Imhotep got hot right at the right time. Uh, Shayla Green hit a three-pointer for uh, Imhotep to, uh, to put them into the lead for good. And um, Jessica Charles uh, was a big, uh, a big part of the game for them. She scored 17 points and ended up winning the uh, Most Valuable Player Award uh, for the Public League Championship game. And you can see now that uh, the uh, Imhotep team is uh, coming up and pressing, but not there. <laughs> Imhotep, uh, very quick team, uh, very tough defense, and um, they uh, they certainly earned it. Uh, it looked like for a while like they weren't going to you know be able to come back, and, and they really put on a, a display in the fourth quarter. All right, so we saw a little clip of you sneaking in there, giving the trophy. Yeah, looking sharp, giving away the, <laughs> giving away the plaque, giving away the hardware. Yeah, all dressed up. <laughs> um, so yeah, some good basketball games went on in the Palestra this weekend. And then, um, do you have any more updates from the Public League? Or uh, that was uh, the Public League's last uh, game for the Public League. Um, after uh, we discuss the uh, the Catholic League championship game, then I'll have the uh, District 12 championship uh, you know, schedule okay. for next week. Um, so going right into the Catholic League, also at the Plestra, since you, your team is in there, so you know, or not in there, I mean in the Catholic <laughs> League, I'm sorry, <laughs> sensitive sub uh, subject, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know more about you know some of the teams that played. Yeah, um, and another great Catholic League final um, back and forth contest between you know, Cardinal O'Hara and um, Newman Gretti, not Archbishop Wood this year. <laughs> Cardinal O'Hara and Newman Gretti. Um, again, first half finished 22 to 20. Um, a lot of turnovers by both teams in that in that first half. I'm sure they were getting some of the jitters out. It, it is an, a crazy environment down there. It's a, it's an unbelievable environment, but it will get to any anybody's nerves, especially if he's. 14 to 18 year olds down there playing in front of so many people um, on one of the biggest stages um, of their life so far. So uh, that was to be expected. In the second half, um, New McGrady did pull out, and I think they went up nine points in the third quarter, and you thought, okay, this could be it. New McGrady might run away with it. Um, a credit to O'Hara. They battled back, um, ended up cutting it, um, cutting it to two by the end of the third quarter. Um, at that point in time, they, O'Hara started to press Newman Gretti. Newman Gretti had three turnovers in 12 seconds, and it was just suddenly from nine points to two, and the momentum was swinging O'Hara's way. Um, the other thing it was Gretti was, was in the bonus. They had nine team fouls enter in the fourth quarter. So the entire fourth quarter, they played, um, you know, putting O'Hara on the line anytime they touched them, fouled them, anything. Uh, so that was, that, that's hard to play defense that way. Um, O'Hara ended up getting 30 points out of their 54 total. Um, from the foul line. 
Uh, it was still, it, it, that being said, it was 42-38 with three minutes left to go. Um, there was another foul. O'Hara went up 43-38, to um, and, and it maintained that score until about a minute left. At that point, uh, they went up about five or six, and then there was a couple technicals in there. I think frustration ticked in, and, and then the, the score ended up being 54-29, to but it was not nearly a 15-point game. It was a back-and-forth, two-possession, one-possession game that just slipped away late. Um, O'Hara did an incredible job of <coughs> finishing out the game with foul shots. Um, Mara Hendrickson, Drexel-bound guard, ended up with 26 leading all scorers, um, and I think Molly Paolino, a kid that deserves to be all Catholic, no doubt, in our league this year for whatever reason, didn't get nominated by all the coaches. She was nominated by me, Molly, if you're out there, mm-hmm. undoubtedly deserved to be all Catholic, um, and her defensive efforts showed it. I think Ingram was held to seven points, or at least had seven points until a later point in the game. Wow. Um, so I think it was really O'Hara's defense keeping Ingram and Tatiana Jones in check for Garetti for long enough where they could get a lead in the fourth quarter. And then once O'Hara has a lead, I know better than anybody else, they can really spread the floor with their guard play. They're not as big as anybody, but their guard play, the way they handle pressure, they spread you out. And then you either foul them on the perimeter or they dribble around and they can get to the basket and finish. And that's kind of what happened late in that fourth quarter. Um, You get behind them and you're, you're scrapping. At that point, it's their game. Um, and they ended up, again, winning back-to-back Catholic League championships, 54-39. to I think it was just that experience of, of Garther, Paolino, and Hendrickson being there before, winning there before, um, <clears throat> excuse me, just overcoming. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> overcoming Garetti in that fourth quarter and getting the win. Um, so, yeah, so we have some highlights for this game, too. So let's take a look at that. So winning championships is what it's all about this time of year. Um, so speaking of the District 12 championships, you have a little more information to give us? Yeah, this weekend, um, the, uh, uh, the Catholic League champion, uh, champions from each classification will play the Public League uh, champions in each classification uh, in what is uh, unofficially known as a city, city title game. Um, so... The, uh, the winners of these games will be the number one seed from District 12 in, this, in the state championship tournament. The losers will be the number two seed. So um, on Friday night at South Philly High uh, uh, in 6A, Olney plays Cardinal O'Hara. And uh, uh, the 5A uh, game will be uh, Mastery North against uh, Mike's Archbishop Wood team. Uh, that's Saturday at Lincoln at 1 o'clock. Uh, in 4A, we have uh, Auden Reed playing Bonner Prendergast. That's Friday at 5.30 at Father Judge. Um, 3A, we have uh, Public League champion Imhotep playing the uh, Catholic League runner-up Newman Garetti um, on Friday at Lincoln at 5.30. Uh, in 2A, Motivation is playing West Catholic, and that game is Saturday uh, at South Philly at 1 o'clock. And... Um, We've mentioned over the last couple of weeks about this sub-regional with District 1 and District 12 uh, in single A. Uh, Sankofa, and I'll talk about this game in a, in a minute or two, but uh, Sankofa is the number two seed in that regional. Um, they're playing Jenkintown, the top seed, and that game is going to be Saturday night at uh, Council Rock South uh, at 6 o'clock. So both of those teams, in fact, all, all six of those teams will be going to the, uh, or all 12 you tell I'm a gym teacher, I can't add. But um, <laughs> you know, they'll all be going to the uh, the state tournament. So, All right, well, good luck to all of those teams going forward. And uh, moving on, we're going to go to District 1 and talk about the brackets from 1A to 6A. Okay. Well, Jenkintown, as I mentioned, is the number one seed. Uh, Sankofa, I was at that game. It was at my school. And uh, they played Philmont Christian Academy, which is the number six seed. And uh, Philmont hung in there for, for most of the game. And uh, uh, 
young lady named uh, Zara Green. Uh, she was obviously the best player on the floor for both teams, and uh, she kind of took the game over in the uh, in the fourth quarter, and they ended up holding on to win 47-46. I believe it was 47-40 with about a minute left, and uh, turning the ball over, Philmont took advantage and uh, nearly came back in that game, and uh, uh, they turned it over with like 1.2 seconds left, and didn't get the opportunity to do that. Um, Jenkintown uh, is led by uh, Jennifer Kremp. She had uh, 18 points, and uh, she scored her 1,000th point this season, uh, Mike. I'm not sure. she. I think she scored her 1,000th, maybe, but she just set the record for three-pointers. Um, oh, three-pointers. The, the right Jenkintown uh, school single-season record. She, she had five in that game and scoring 18. She also, uh, that would be her 56th three on the season and counting. Wow. So she has the record with 56, and now she's still got more games to play, at least two from what I understand, district championship, and then they're, they've and the qualified for states. So at the very least, they'll be playing two more, and she'll be, hopefully, for her sake, is piling on that record. Right, Jenkintown had a 24-13 lead in the third quarter, and um, they ended up beating uh, the Christian Academy 57-32. Um, I really uh, you know, expect Jenkintown to... Uh, to win that game, but as I said, both teams get to go to states. And um, Sankofa, if they end up as the second seed out of District 12, they'll still have a, a game near home. They, they won't have to travel. So that's always a good thing. Those uh, bus trips could be a, a killer at this time of year. Yeah, I'd expect um, Jenkintown, I kind of looked at the state brackets, peaked ahead a little bit. They, uh, I think preseason or early on, we talked about them in Lebanon Catholic with a meetup for the state championship. They can only meet in the state semifinals if they're going to meet. Uh, so okay. it can't be those two in the state championship. So some other team's going to get there. Um, Jenkintown last year lost to Lebanon Catholic, but th the difference this year will be, um, for Jenkintown, I think could be that they go about eight deep. They have two freshmen, uh, Carly Mulvaney uh, and Maui Walsh. They've, they're going about eight deep this year. They've gone about five or six the last two years and, and had really good seasons. That could be the difference at this point in the, in the year, having fresher legs, more kids to go to if, if kids are in foul trouble or kids can't get shots to fall. You have more options to go to. So look to see if that pays, pays off go, going down the home stretch. And from what I understand, they play a really uh, suffocating defense. They're a very tough on defense. So, you know, uh, Sankofa is going to have their, their uh, work uh, cut out for them. Uh, in the two-way bracket uh, on Saturday, Sacred Hearts playing Delco Christian for the uh, um, championship there. Sacred Hearts the top seed. Delco is the number two seed. Uh, in 3A, uh, we have uh, North Schuylkill from uh, the Coal Region from up in Ashland, PA, uh, playing St. Basil's. And uh, St. Basil's is the two seed. North Schuylkill is the number one seed. I'm really curious to see how good North Schuylkill is because uh, we know how good St. Basil's is. And, uh, you know, the Panthers ought to be giving them a, a tough time. Uh, St. Basil's had a pretty easy time in the semifinals. They beat Notre Dame Green Pond 55-24. Uh, uh, Danae Carter at 17 points. Um, Basil's opened up with an 18-3 lead in the first quarter. So anytime you do that, it's tough to overcome it. And, you know, they were able to ride that out. Um, they opened up the, uh, the second half with an 18-6 to six run. That doesn't help you either. No. So uh, when the third quarter was over, uh, Basil's was up 46-18, uh, and uh, you know that pretty much was all she wrote. So um, St. Basil's is playing at a really high level right now. Obviously, coming off high off the Academy's League win, um, you know, I, I would think that they would pull off the win in that championship game just based yep. on how they're playing. But I, I can't discredit New, North Schuylkill. I've never seen them play. So Me neither, and who knows who they play. But, right. uh, you know, um, but we know how good Basil's is, and uh, that should be a good game. On uh, the uh, foray bracket, we have uh, top seed Lower Moreland playing number two seed Gwyn and Mercy, which is pretty, pretty much what we expected to happen. Uh, that game is going to be Saturday at, at noon at Council Rock South. I think they have four games going on there on Saturday at, at Council Rock South. Um, I know Sankofa is playing there, and uh, I think they have a four-game slate going on. I think the first game goes off at like 11 o'clock. So if anybody's up that early, uh, <laughs> you know, head on over to uh, to Holland for some good basketball. Uh, the 5A bracket, uh, Westchester Henderson is going to be playing Villa Maria on Saturday at noon at Temple. And... Uh, 
Again, this is something that we kind of expected would happen. Uh, Westchester Henderson is the number one seed. Uh, Villa Maria ended up being their num number three seed. They uh, uh, edged out Westchester Ruston 69-58 uh, to end up with uh, you know, a spot in the finals. Yeah, I actually went down to those games. They were at Harrington High School, um, Delaware County, and um, the first game was Ruston versus Villa Maria. And that was a game where you thought Villa Maria was going to go up big. And every time you thought that would happen, Westchester Ruston would hit a couple of threes, tie the game up, or even took the lead in the first half. Second half started off the same way. You thought Villa Maria was going to jump out and get, really go ahead big. Ruston hit a couple of threes, kept it close enough. Uh, eventually, Villa Maria did, did get, uh, get a double digit lead. But Paige Louder is just really tough, super athletic, um, about five foot 11, maybe a little taller, um, but jumps. She's only a sophomore. She was the MVP of the Academies League. Um, but jumps, scores, I think she had 28 in the game. And um, Abby Wilhelm, I think, is another five foot ten kid for, from Villa Marie that really gives them the one two punch down low, and they both come out to the perimeter. They can attack off the bounce, getting to the rim, and they, they hang in the air and they can finish. Um, so Villa Marie could give Westchester Henderson a good game. Westchester Henderson didn't make it to the district championship game last year, but they, we played them in the first round. They have good size, they have a lot of returning kids from that state team last year. Um, so that should be a fun championship game to see at the 5A level. Okay, in uh, the 6A bracket, um, you know, there were uh, 24 teams, I believe, in the, um, in the tournament to, to begin with, and uh, the number one number two seeds made it through to the final. Uh, number one seed, Souderton, uh, beat uh, Council Rock North 49-39 uh, on um, uh, Wednesday night, and Central Buck South is the uh, number two seed, and they knocked off number three seed uh, Springford 39-36 in what I understand was a, a pretty exciting game. It was a pretty exciting game. I only caught the fourth quarter of the CB South game. Um, and it was funny. It was like the game was tied when I walked in at the end of the third quarter. And right from the get-go in the fourth quarter, it was all CB South. And you're wondering, like, what was going on in the first three quarters? You don't know. You know, I missed it. But... Um, then again, Springford started attacking the basket, getting some foul calls and finishing. The, I think they had a couple end ones in the fourth quarter. They have a freshman guard, uh, I believe Abby Goodrich, who was just super quick, off the penetration, getting into the basket. Uh, she missed a couple that I think she'd want back, and maybe next year as a sophomore, she'll get them back and, and finish more of them. Maybe in state, she'll, she'll learn from those misses and, and get them back. But eventually, Council Rock South was sent to the foul line. They, they went cold, and um, it was a Two or three, it was a three point game late in the fourth quarter. Um, Maddie McShane really stepped up. One down one end, she took a charge when they were up three, um, and Springford was roaring back. She stepped in, sacrificed her body, took a charge. I thought it was the right call, and it went the other way. Um, credit to her. Then down the other end, I, I talked about, I think they missed six foul shots closing out the game. She gets an offensive rebound with 17 seconds left when they're up two or three um, and secures that ball and, and basically helps CB South secure the win. So in a game where you, I walked in, you thought CB South was going to run away with it in the fourth quarter. Um, it, it ended up being a player that wasn't one of their leading scorers. A kid, she had two points in the game, comes up with two huge plays. That's kind of what I love about coaching is when you have a team and a kid that th steps up, has the opportunity to to fill another role other than scoring um, helps a team win a big game like that. You um, always need those players, at least one player like that on every team. I know, you know, in the past couple of teams that I've played on, there's always been that one player that risks their body and does things that don't necessarily, you know, go on the stat line, like taking charges. That's not a stat. It should be. <laughs> Maybe right. more people would want to take it, but, you know, little stuff like that matters. And it's like, you know, results in bigger plays. Teammates, just great teammates that say, listen, I just want to play some basketball. I love my friends. I love my teammates. I'll work as hard as I have to work. You know, if you want to shoot the ball, you shoot the ball. I'll just do all this other stuff. It's part of the game, too, and help the team win. You love it as a coach and as a fan. I think more and more people learn to appreciate that as well. So Maddie McShane, huge plays for CB South. Not to discredit uh, Howie Mino and Alexa Brody, who had 16 and 15 apiece. Uh, they, that helps, too. But Maddie <laughs> McShane came up with huge plays down the stretch. And were you at the, uh, the Souderton game? I did see the Souderton game in Garnet Valley. A uh, game kind of sloppy, starting off slow. Um, Garnet Valley, both teams have decent size. Um, Kate Connolly's about 6'1", 6'2". Um, Elena Cardona's about 5'11", 6 foot, um, strong kid. Um, Megan Walbrandt's about 5'10", so just length. And then on the other side, uh, Brianna Borky and uh, Emily McAteer, and there's a, they, 
Carnival Valley had two other kids. I, I lost their names, but they have two other kids. They're about six foot, six foot one, six foot two. And they sat in a zone, and that's hard to operate against a zone with everybody being that, that, that big and that long. Um, and, and it kind of made the game move a little slower. It, was, it slowed Soderton down a little bit. Soderton was winning most of the game, but they never went up where, where, where you thought they might run away with the game. They never went up that much. Garner Valley just played at their own pace. They kept, kept close, kept close, kept close. Um, eventually, Soderton just started to hit a couple more shots. Uh, they blew the game open late in the game, won by 17 points. Um, but give Garner Valley a lot of credit for fighting during the whole game. Um, and, and give Soderton, they really moved the ball well. I think they, they're going to want Kate Connolly getting a few more shots um, down the stretch in states if they want to big, win big games. But they threw it inside to her, and, and she was able to kick it out. You know, it was a really good ball move. They got open looks. They weren't able to knock a lot of them down um, early on. But they, they got the win. That's what they came for at this point in the season, 47-30. And they're going to play CB South now for the fourth time this season. They've played them. They went one-on-one early in the season and then uh, beat them in the – Continental, national, the uh, continental. suburban one, continental yeah. uh, league championship. Um, so that should be a fun, exciting matchup for that championship as well. From what I understand, Southerton played really outstanding defense uh, in the game, uh, caused a lot of turnovers, and uh, uh, I think Springford was held to like seven points until like two minutes left in the first quarter. Yeah, then they, I think, they had thirteen at the end of the quarter, but. It took a long time for him to get those seven points. It was very similar to Garner Valley. Garner Valley had four late in the second quarter, and you're kind of waiting for them to put some points in the basket. They lay up opportunities that weren't just falling. I think it, I mentioned it earlier with the Catholic League Championship, those jitters. I think you just need that ball to, to fall a couple of times. I've been there in state games. You're like, if we can just get some of these to fall, we'll get it going. You just hope you're not in too big of a hold, you know, to get yourself out of. Um, and they finally made some, and that's what kept it closer because – Southerton was really having a tough time finding ways to score against the zone as well. So, um, yeah, similar scoring, scoring there early on in those games. And momentum is, a, well, you guys well know that it's just such a big factor, uh, especially at the high school level. You know, one shot falls, two shots fall. Uh, I saw a game last week where, uh, you know, a kid hit seven three-pointers, and it, every, every t- shot he took, it just bing, 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 right in the, right in the basket. You know, so... The game of runs that comes from confidence. Yeah, confidence is <laughs> yeah. right. It's a weird combination. <laughs> but before we get into any more brackets, we will take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll, we will talk about 11, District 11, 3 and 2. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. We're talking goaltending here, and we're talking about high school rules as opposed to NCAA or NBA, which are slightly different. The referee is looking for four criteria. Number one, is the ball on its way down? Number two, is the ball fully above the rim? Number three, was it an attempted shot? And number four, did that shot have a chance to go in, in the opinion of the referee? If all four of those criteria are met, a goaltending call is made, and the basket is Good. Slapping the backboard is never golden. It's always a technical fail. Welcome back. And as promised, we are going to get right into the brackets from District 11. All right. Well, in single A, um, <clears throat> the uh, championship is uh, tomorrow at Mart's Hall in Pottsville. Uh, it's Nativity BVM against Weatherly. Uh, Nativity is the number five seed. They knocked off the number one seed, uh, Susquehanna. So um, that game was 67-33. How do you knock off the number one seed by 30 points? But it happened. Um, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was a, that was a, a, a first-round game. Nativity won 55-40. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Makes they by 15 <laughs> points over a number one seed. Um, and uh, Weatherly knocked off uh, Forest City uh, 58-29. Uh, 2A uh, championship again is uh, at March Hall tomorrow. And uh, Montnoy City knocked off uh, Williams Valley. 
uh, 64-21, Montnoy is the number one seed. Um, Minersville, uh, in the other semifinal, is the number two seed. They beat Marion Catholic, uh, the number three seed, uh, 53-38. So that should, be a, that should be a good final. Uh, we talked about the, um, uh, the sub-regional between District 1 and District 11 with uh, North Schuylkill and St. Basil's. Uh, so that should be really exciting. Uh, 4A bracket, uh, you've got <clears throat> Bethlehem Catholic and uh, Allentown Central Catholic, uh, two of the powers up, uh, you know, up in the uh, Lehigh Valley. Um, Bethlehem Catholic won the regular season uh, title, uh, 40 to 37 over Allentown Central, so that should be, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, payback to, that they'll be looking for there. Um, and Emily Vaughn. Uh, in that game, hit uh, the game winner uh, hit a three with uh, 145 left. So, um, Allentown Central beat Tamaqua in the uh, semifinal, 44-40. Uh, and uh, Emma Kaczynski had 19 points for Tamaqua. She's got 859 career points as a sophomore. Wow. Yeah. So. That's, wow, that's a lot. That's a She's lot. She's almost at a thousand, right? I would think she, she may be cl left. closing on two thousand for her career when she by the time she's uh, calling it quits at the end of her senior year. Uh, the five A bracket, uh, we've talked about Southern Lehigh a few times this year. They're the number one seed. Um, that game is uh, Sunday, I believe. What's the third? Saturday. <laughs> Saturday uh, at Bethlehem Freedom. They're playing number three seed Pottsville. And uh, the 6A bracket, you've got um, Nazareth, the number four seed, playing uh, Bethlehem Freedom, the number two seed. Uh, that game is uh, tomorrow, or no, actually that game is being played right now. Uh, it's uh, being played tonight. Uh, Nazareth uh, got there by beating number five seed Parkland. Uh, Jamie Yunkin had 14 points, and Julianne uh, Dignam had 10 points. Um, Freedom got to the final by beating... Uh, um, Northampton, the number seven seed, um, uh, Haley Silfies, uh, who has a thousand points, uh, she was, she was very good in that game, and, uh, Rachel Sanchez had, uh, ten points for, uh, oh, I'm sorry, for William Allen, so I had the wrong final in there, but, uh, so that's it for, uh, District 11, so a lot of the teams we're familiar with, uh, are in the finals. As planned, and we're going to go right to District 3 and get to some more brackets. <laughs> okay. Um, single A, um, Lebanon Catholic is going to be playing Linden Hall, and that game um, uh, will be tonight. So it's <laughs> at the Giant Center in Hershey, and uh, you know, Lebanon Catholic is 21-6, and six, Linden Hall is 18-4. So Lebanon Catholic is usually a... Uh, uh, a very good team. Uh, in their semifinal, uh, they beat the Christian School of York, and um, Alexis Hill had 21 points in that game. Tough it, player. Tough yep. player, really quick hands, really good length, going to Northeastern next year. Oh, okay. um, she'll be making some noise, I would think, in that game and um, moving forward in her career. Okay. Um, Camp Hill is uh, the girls' champion of, in uh, 2A. Uh, Camp Hill uh, won their 10th district title, and um, uh, they have a young lady named Diamond Bragg. I think we talked about her at the beginning of the season. She's going to Wisconsin. Uh, she had a, a triple-double of 17 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists, and uh, they uh, uh, opened with a, um, uh, an 11-0 run over Steelton High Spire and, uh, and then outscored Steelton in the, in the third quarter 24-5. So... Um, you know, they pretty much handled that game. They ended up winning that 69-25. So Camp Hill's the champion in, uh, in 2A. 3A, uh, Trinity won that championship, and um, that game was uh, on Wednesday. Uh, Trinity won their uh, 14th district title. Um, they, uh, they, they beat uh, York Catholic uh, 62-57. Uh, Sunshine McCray had a big basket down at the end. Uh, Jalen Moore had two free throws. So those, those uh, four points there kind of sealed the, sealed the deal. Um, and uh, Cassidy Ingram, 18 points, including 13 in the, uh, in the third quarter. 
The uh, 4A bracket, uh, it's going to be Lancaster Catholic against Burke's Catholic. And um, Lancaster beat Bishop McDevitt of Harrisburg uh, in the semifinals, 67-30. Uh, Kiki Jefferson had 23 points in that game. And, um, that Burks, game's going on tonight, right? Uh, that game is tonight. That is correct. I think, In fact, uh, it may be over. Might be over right now. I just was reading tweets before the show. Uh, Kiki had 24 points. It was a 44-43 game. So if you oh, can wow. tune into Twitter right now, there could be some, some back-and-forth action. So Burks reached that game by beating Wyomissing uh, 53-44. Uh, in the 5A uh, uh, championship game, there's uh, Lower Dolphin. Uh, they beat uh, Susquehannock 45-32. Uh, Amber Schweiger at 15 points. Uh, Paulina Molinen, 14 points. Um, Harrisburg is going to be their opponent, and uh, they beat Twin Valley uh, 56-40. Uh, Dejeuner Brand uh, Brandon had 25 points, and uh, Amya Woodyard had 18 points. Uh, this is a, a rematch from last year, which uh, Harrisburg... Uh, Actually, it's a rematch from the East Penn League, uh, or Mid-Penn Championship uh, game. Um, Harrisburg won that one 39-37. So um, that game is Saturday at the Giants Center at 11 o'clock. And in 6A, Central Dolphin won that title, uh, beating Central York 37-26. Uh, that was their second straight district title, and uh, uh, Sam Gress uh, had 12 points for Central Dolphin. So that takes care of District 3. And District 2. <laughs> More bracket information. Okay. <laughs> In single A, uh, you've got uh, Nativity BVM uh, playing um, Weatherly, and that game is uh, on uh, Saturday. No, I'm sorry, it's tomorrow, March 2nd. i got to get used to being in March. But, um, it's March Madness. That's right. <laughs> uh, Nativity uh, beat Susquehanna uh, 55-40. <clears throat> uh, Nativity scored 15 of the final 16 points in that game. So, um, you know, they really uh, put it on there at the end. Madison Clark had 16 points, and her sister Allison had 15 points and 11 rebounds. Um, the other semifinal was Weatherly and Forest City. Uh, Weatherly won that 58-29. Um, Weatherly is going to be going for their first dis district championship since 1986. Um, Megan Pfeiffer at 17 points, <clears throat> five rebounds and five steals for uh, for Weatherly. The thing that was weird about this game is the nicknames of the teams. Weatherly are the Lady Wreckers. The Lady, the Lady Wreckers. Wreckers. And Forest City are the Golden Girls. <laughs> oh my god. They probably get teased so bad in like, you know, student sections are probably just the like golden girls are probably in. wheeling out the old T V show. Kids probably don't even know what that, that is now though. <laughs> probably. No, probably not. It's funny. Millennials watch more uh you know, me T V. The Wreckers versus the Golden Girls. That's right. All right, so in double A, uh Northwest area is playing Old Forge. Uh Old Forge is the defending champ. And that game is going to be on uh, uh, on the fourth at the uh, Mohegan Sun Arena up in uh, Wilkesbury. Um, Northwest area started the season one and six, and uh, during the season they won uh, ten straight, and they're in their first district uh, title game since uh, d joining District Two in 1985. So, um, Old Forge the defending champ and Northwest the first timers. So we'll see what happens there. Three uh, A. Uh, you've got Dunmore playing Holy Redeemer. Uh, Dunmore beat Mid Valley 60 to 27, and Holy Redeemer knocked off Holy Cross 51-41. Um, young lady named uh, Sam Yencha uh, is just a scoring machine for uh, for Holy Redeemer, so uh, they're going to need to shut her down. Holy Redeemer's the uh, defending uh, champ in that in that bracket. In uh, 4A, you've got. Um, Nanticoke and Scranton Prep. Uh, Scranton Prep knocked off Berwick 49-41, and Nanticoke beat Wyoming area 50-43. to uh, Nanticoke had won 17 straight games at the beginning of the season. They were 17-0. and uh, They kind of limped home. They, they lost three of their last four. So, um, you know, but that should be a real good, uh, real good matchup there. In uh, 5A, uh, Abington Heights is playing Crestwood. 
And um, Abington Heights is the defending champ. And uh, Crestwood and Abington Heights are both nicknamed the Comets. Okay. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> but um, in the uh, semifinal against Pittston area, Abington Heights won 45-29. Uh, Hannah Kowalski had 28 points in that game. Um, and Wyoming Valley West uh, was beaten by Crestwood, 60-28. to um, Crestwood's in their second district final uh, in District 2 in 34 years. So they're not a real frequent visitor to that, uh, to that game. Uh, but they got uh, Julia Markowski. Uh, she scored 18 points in the semifinal, and she's got over 1,000 points for her career. And uh, Sarah Hopkins scored 16 points to help beat uh, Wyoming Valley West. <clears throat> 6A, uh, we've got Scranton and Hazleton. Um, and it's a, uh, a rematch from, uh, from last year, and uh, that was won by Scranton last year. So, you know, Hazleton will be looking to, uh, to come back and win that game. So that does it for District uh, 2. All right, so before we get into more brackets, don't get too excited. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with District 7 and District 10. Ladies and gentlemen, you have spent three days with one of the most insane, with the most insane program, okay, I have witnessed in my 17 year career. It excites me, the presence of point, point blank period, of Coach Julie, of Coach Stout, of the people that he works out with, that he, that he trains with, okay, it's exciting. And you have had the luxury, the luxury of spending three awesome days with these people. I have Coach Stout for Mr. Cody, watch Coach Farrell play. He is one of the most annoying basketball players you will ever see in your life. Okay? Because exactly what he trains, exactly what he preaches to you, he does at all times. This is real habit. This is not a gimmick. This is real basketball. Real basketball. Something that he has found success with. He has spread the word. Let's talk live ball contact versus dead ball contact. We're trying to determine whether we have a common foul, a technical foul, an intentional foul, or a flagrant foul which ejects the player. So, a live ball contact is never a technical. Live ball contact must be ruled either a common foul, a shooting foul, an intentional foul, or a flagrant foul. In high school rule, an intentional foul means that there was no attempt to play the ball. A deliberate foul was taken without a basketball move, that's an intentional foul. If that player was attempting to injure or hurt his opponent, it can be considered flagrant, and that player is then ejected. Now, let's take a dead ball situation. The whistle has blown on a violation or a foul or whatever the case may be, and a player comes over and shoves another player or hits another player. Now we have contact during a dead ball situation. That is always a technical foul. Can it be a flagrant technical? Yes. Again, if there was an attempt to injure that player, a technical foul can be ruled flagrant and that player can be thrown out of the game and sent to the bench. In high school, a player goes to the bench when he's ejected, not to the locker room. And that's live ball, dead ball, contact fouls. Welcome back. As promised, we're going to get into more brackets, starting with the brackets from District 7. Okay, the, uh, the, the Whippy Old uh, Single A Girls Bracket. Um, the... Um, uh, Home team is uh, West uh, Winchester Thurston. They'll be playing West Green, and um, that is on Friday uh, at three o'clock. Then in two A, you've got Bishop Canavan playing East uh, Allegheny. Uh, that game is Saturday at eleven a.m. at the uh, uh, the Peterson Event Center. I guess that's where they're having all their championship games. Um, 3A, or excuse me, we don't have 3A. 4A, uh, Cardinal World North Catholic uh, is playing Beaver. And uh, that game is uh, Friday at 7 o'clock. Oakland Catholic in the 5A is playing Gateway. And that game will be Saturday at 3 o'clock. And in 6A, North Allegheny against Peters Township. That should be a real good game. Uh, that game is Saturday at 7 p.m. 
So that's what we have from District 7 from the, uh, the Whippeal. So make sure you guys tune in and watch those games. And then last but not least, we have District 10. Okay, we uh, haven't really paid a whole lot of attention to this district. They're up in the uh, northwest corner of the state, up in Erie. Uh, but they do have some uh, some good basketball teams up there. Uh, the single A bracket uh, is uh, Kennedy Catholic playing Farrell. Uh, that game is uh, Saturday. In two uh, A, uh, you got West Middlesex playing Reynolds. Uh, Reynolds uh, got there by beating uh, Sagertown uh, 39-21. Uh, Kelly Park had 19 points for uh, for Reynolds. Um, they uh, led 15 to four in the, in the second quarter, and uh, at the half they had a 20 to 11 lead. They hit 17 of 26 free throws in the fourth quarter. Wow, that was a lot of uh, a lot of whistle blowing there. And um, I believe this is three. I'm losing. Oh, 3A. Oh man, uh, 3A. <laughs> we have uh, Northwestern playing Seneca. Uh, Northwestern beat uh, Wilmington. Uh, 5432 or I'm sorry Sharpsville they beat Sharpsville 5750 to get there uh, Monica Brown had 23 points and she's a thousand point scorer for her career uh, Seneca knocked off Greenville 4339 and uh, Olivia Sonny had 13 points for for Seneca uh, in the uh, 4a bracket you've got uh, Villa Maria uh, they're playing Mercyhurst prep and actually Mercyhurst got there uh, by beating Oil City in Villa Maria's gym, so how about yeah. that? Yeah, they uh, they they were playing. Uh, you know, uh, that is a neutral site. Uh, they ended up, Mercyhurst ended up beating Oil City 76-37. Uh, the mercy rule went into effect, uh, so you know you hate to see that in a district semifinal. Um, Emily Thompson and Caitlin Pasco had 17 points each for Mercyhurst, so. Uh, that should be an interesting game with Villa Maria. Villa Maria is a well-known program. They've been in the state championship the last four years in different classifications, and they won three in a row in 2011 to 2013, I believe. Um, so they know how to get there. I think this year they really want to get over the top, look for some of those returning players to kind of push their team to maybe make make that jump into the championship. Bethlehem Catholics, a lot of teams in Florida that will have something to say about it. But um, they really know what they're doing out there in Erie at Villa Marie. Okay, 5A. Um, there's uh, Harbor Creek is playing Slippery Rock. And uh, Harbor Creek got to the final by beating Hickory 45-39. Uh, Allie Benham had 10 points in the third quarter and 21 for the game. Uh, and uh, so they'll be playing Slippery Rock in the, uh, in the final. And in 6A, um, you've got Erie McDowell, uh, and I'm not even sure what I'm looking at here. But <laughs> uh, it looks like uh, Erie is playing Erie McDowell, um, and uh, that looks like that's what's going on in the final for uh, 6A in District 10. Sounds good. We uh, have a incoming Facebook comment from Michael Palmer Jr. He said, <laughs> "He said we need some energy. I'm at the gym right now. Some Jaquan Newton type of energy. Philly basketball is unmatched." <laughs> and then he also added hashtag in the paint, hashtag in the trenches, hashtag SFBN. This is where games are won. Hashtag facts. So, <laughs> he sounds pretty pumped up wherever he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jaquan Newton, Newman Gretti graduate, did just did a big buzzer beater uh, for Miami University over North Carolina. North oh, Carolina I saw that. tied the game yep. on the buzzer. Uh, Jaquan Newton hit a buzzer beater right back from about 50 feet away from the basket to, to win the game. So, Jaquan Newton representing Philadelphia in Philadelphia Catholic League yeah. uh, all the way in Miami. Yeah, it's so or, funny. Or North how Carolina in this case. but Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was funny because. Uh, uh, North Carolina player hit the three, and I think the players kind of thought the game was over. But right. he, they inbounded the ball. He went up and just shot it and oh. went right in. Wow. So was, it was pretty interesting. He was ready for it. Yeah, yeah he's been in the big <laughs> moments plenty of times. Yeah, sounds good. So, anything else you guys want to add before we 
in this lovely show. Today. Let's get ready for the big show. Yeah, that's um, it. You know, next week I think we'll be able to talk about you know the final breakdown of everybody where they're where they're going to be seated for state the state championship runs that um, teams that worked really hard, seniors are going to fight really hard for. Um, by next week, we'll, we'll have those brackets, and, the, and everything starts the following Saturday. So good luck to everybody in the state cha- in their district championships, and looking forward to uh, seeing how things pan out to start the state runs next week. This is what everybody plays for, uh, you know, to get through the district championships. Uh, we didn't even talk about the uh, the, the seeding games, like for um, you know, in District One Six A, they have uh, a ninth and tenth place game. So the tenth place uh, team has got to travel to probably the District 3 champion. Uh, the ninth place team's got to go see the District 11 champion. So to get through all that, win all those games and get there, you know, uh, a coach made a good point to me the other night, said we're one of 32 left playing. So that's what you play for. Right. That's a good way to look at it, being that there's so many teams in right. Philly alone, but just in the state of Pennsylvania. So. Yep. Got to be optimistic and positive. So it's an impressive feat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that is it from us. We will be back every Thursday at 7 p.m. right here on Facebook Live, providing guys with everything related to high school basketball for girls basketball specifically in the state of Pennsylvania. You can always catch up with In the Paint by downloading our latest podcast. Just go to the iTunes Store and search for the span the 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 fan the what, what is it called? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Tongue twister <laughs> for the sports fan base network. Oh my goodness. Um, to listen to our episodes, download it, but most importantly, make sure you give us a five star rating. Don't miss our other shows on Mondays. We have Three in the Key on Monday nights talking about basketball, boys basketball in the state of Pennsylvania. On Tuesday, we have On the Mets and On Wednesday night, we have an all-new show called Varsity Voice. So in the meantime, make sure you go to our website, www.thesfbn.com, and check out more information related to high school sports for the state of Pennsylvania. So we will see you guys next week.